Good afternoon. So today we will learn about ALRS Volume Three, also called NP Two Eight Three. So this is the book. Before that, I will show you how to find the book. This is your Admiralty Chart Catalog NP One Three One. So in this, under Publications, that is a list of ALRS. In ALRS, we are going to select. NP283 so you'll just have to draw this is the NP283 diagram draw the place you are going to go to and select the NP which volume you are so there are basically two volumes so we'll be my ship is in the far east so we'll be using volume 2 next before this LRS volume 3 is opened I'll show you something else this is the quarterly notice to mariners NP 39 of 21 in this they will give you the whole list of corrections so this is volume 3 so volume 3 mine is second part the week it was published edition and the year it was published and below it they will give you all the corrections that were applicable see Australia 51 of 2020 then of 2021 5 and 11 these are the weeks of notice to mariners so let us go to ALRS volume 3 as soon as you open the book first you have to write down the place and date where you received your book next comes the record of updates so this is the record of all the updates that were carried out in this volume and then comes the contents remember volume 3 helps you in navtex egc facsimile and weather reports so basically i will turn the pages these are all same for all the lrs volumes and these are the abbreviations and glossary that are contained in this book you can see then comes list of services in country order so these are the country list and their stations so I'll turn it then comes the maritime safety information so maritime safety information they are giving you a reprint of some journals manuals so the types of broadcast navtex safety net then scheduled scheduling of these uh, messages and navigational warnings for worldwide navigational warning services then sub areas this is an important thing what are sub areas what are coastal areas what are local areas so this I will keep it for a moment so that you can read it then comes the structure of navigational warnings how they are meant again then the practices of countries so this book covers some countries so what are the national practices for maritime safety information broadcast so I'll give you just an example you can just pause the video and read around it this comes for the whole books that has been covered all the countries then comes radio navigational warnings on the internet so they will give you the list of all the nav areas and the internet link also the AAS broadcasting then the safety net safety net is basically 
International Automatic Direct Printing Satellite Based Service for Promulgation of Navigation and Meteorological Warnings and they will tell you what to do if you miss a message this is important if you miss a message just switch off the terminal and start it again then the internal memory gets cleared and the messages if it is rebroadcasted you will receive it and it won't be skipped so this is what you will do when you skip an ETC warning then this is basically the satellite footprints of SATC which satellite covers which area POR, AOR West, AOR, East, IOR again POR so this comes in SATC then fleet broadband which satellite is covering which area this is for nav area this is for met area then comes the EGC MSI broadcast system operational information so they are giving you which nav area which coordinator what is the time of the EGC broadcast and which is the immersat C satellite and this is iridium I have never sailed with iridium after navigational information comes the meteorological information again the met area coordinator which time they are going to send you the meteorological broadcast which SATC is going to cover it remember these are all corrections so you can see how the correction has been done this comes all the met and nav area diagrams so suppose your ship is going into a region you just select the stations so uh, if I am going through met area 10 I will select met area 10 on my SATC I have already uploaded a video about this the navtex and the weather facts email so we will cover it I will skip through it next comes the navtex so the navtex will they will give you a brief description of the navtex what the navtex is then the standard format of navtex messages then comes the types of message and after this the abbreviation the list of all the abbreviations that are used in a normal navtex message then comes the navtex index diagrams so it just basically you just have to draw a line from where you are going so south africa to south america is covered by x6 and x11 I've already described it in an earlier video about Navtex. Please check it out. So, as a station, for example, the station, this is the coverage of this station, and station code is C, Charlie. Af I'll just skip through the Navtex. After Navtex comes the radio facsimile, that is the weather facts. So, they'll give you a brief description of how to use a weather facsimile station this has been explained earlier then comes the symbols and abbreviations that are used in the weather facts then comes the list of all the facsimile stations in the world so once you find out which area you are going to just take out the place that you are going to and select this facsimile station please watch the earlier video for a detailed description after the weather facts comes another important thing called radio weather service and navigational warnings so this section is in an alphabetical order of the country's name so the section starts from A and ends at Z and whenever it is a navtex is a red color that means it is an international navtex and it is an MRCC if it is blue color that means it is a national navtex and it is normal radio station and blue color means it is a commercial uh, radio station then comes 
this whole section is used to identify the frequencies then their channels type of propagation then these are all remote stations and their location then the types of messages what time these messages are going to be issued and what type of messages are going to be issued the explanation is given out here after this comes the country wise codes oh, before that the weather bulletins and navigational warnings now it is the country wise code of all the stations example if it was australia the control center is at perth australia the control center is at this place and there is no remote stations i'll show you an example with a remote station that will be a better example let me check okay so i'll go to some place with remote stations yeah so if it is it canada victoria remember this is an international navtex with an mrcc control station this is the point then these abbreviations are explained here what a b c to h stands for which channel they are going to transmit that means the frequency and these are all remote stations with their locations so this is basically radio weather facsimile service for navigational warnings i believe that you can watch uh, read these lines so these are explanation of what alpha 2 hotel stands for after this comes these are all corrections you can see then comes remember this is in an alphabetical order from alpha to zulu after this comes the multilingual list of terms used in weather and sea bulletins so what means basically all the uh, bulletins are transmitted in english followed by a local language so english is standardized and if it is in english what corresponds to french or to spanish so this is how it looks like after this comes an very important point this is called ships weather report and these are all contact details of the port meteorological officers why you need them are suppose you want to correct your meteorological instruments on a ship or you want to compare your barometer this is the suppose you are going to canada and you are in atlantic maritimes this is the person you have to call so he will provide a efficient competent person to come to come on board and compare your barometer with their standard barometer as well as any service to the meteorological instruments so this is how you have to call contact the guys after this comes a list of the port meteorological officers so they have explained it here only within the light blue area the number of meteorological observation is inadequate and all vessels in these areas are requested to send a weather report via imersat code 41 so suppose you are transiting this place you are obliged to send a weather report so for sending a weather report IMO has set a certain standard and this is the World Meteorological Observation Voluntary Observing Ship Program. So they are giving you an introduction observation the types of ships which are classification of uh, war ships then comes these are all 
observations for each class of ship in the wa wash system then the reporting procedures so this and comes the codes these are the codes that are used for sending a weather report after this comes ice reports ice reports are so they are there are four organizations that provide ice reports so the four uh, organizations that give are the international ice patrol the canadian ice service this is the international ice patrol how to report it they are given giving it in details next comes these are all international ice patrol their frequencies then comes the canada canada this is also an ice patrol organization after this comes the greenland and after greenland comes the russia it is basically in the northern sea route and in this in this uh, russian ice patrol they will give you the contact details of all the ships that are available for ice breakers so this is these are the list of all the ice breakers that are available and this is basically the northern sea route after this comes international meteorological scales and definitions these are basically how you fill your logbook so if you have any doubt about filling weather on your logbook you can always refer to this book then descriptive terms used in marine forecast by the uk uh, when it is issued by the uk meteorological office then the conversion tables after this conversion for barometric into millimeters then into hectopascals millimeters to hectopascals and then comes wind velocity knots to miles to meters to kilometers and then comes weather apps these are all basically applications that can be downloaded on your phone so these are the apps next comes is the effects of weather on space that is basically the solar flares and how it affects it they have given a brief description of what is what then what are geomagnetic storms radio blackouts their effects their average uh, intervals of observation uh, of occurrence after this comes basically the index the index and finally there will be pages for writing down the notes so this is basically how NP two eight three, that is volume three of ALRS, is to be used. I hope you understood how to use it and how to correct it. Thank you.